Have you ever looked up at the night sky and wondered why you can't see as many stars as you used to? The answer is nightlight pollution. By observing the nightlight satellite imagery from Earth Observation Group, we can infer various aspects of human activity, such as pollution density, urbanization, economic development, energy consumption, and social conflicts. Mapping nightlight pollution is important because it can help us monitor and understand the impacts of human activity on the planet and also identify potential solutions to reduce light pollution and improve the quality of life. So in today's tutorial, we will leverage the shiny packaging R to create an interactive map with a swipe effect to show the nighttime lights in Ukraine before and after the onset of war. The shiny package is a powerful tool that allows us to build web applications using R code without requiring any HTML, CSS, or JavaScript knowledge. The swipe effect is a feature that enables us to compare two layers of a map by dragging a slider across the screen. So we will use the nighttime light data from the Earth Observation Group and select two years 2021 and 2022 to compare the changes in nightlight intensity and distribution in Ukraine. What's up, people? This is Miloš. Welcome back to my channel as I take you on another exciting data visualization and geospatial journey with R. This time, we'll be using nighttime light satellite imagery to create exciting interactive maps with a before and after swipe effect for Ukraine. So the first task is to go to the Earth Observation Group, get those links to the nighttime data, download them then in R, then create a code that is going to allow us to uh, make those two maps before and after. And finally, we'll be using a Shine and some of the CSS and JavaScript code to create beautiful and astonishing interactive maps in R. All right, guys, our first task is to load the packages that we need in this R session and install those that we don't already have. So the first thing is to define a list of libraries that we need. First and foremost, we will need Tidyverse, which is an umbrella package for data wrangling and data visualization. From this one, we'll be definitely using at least ggplot2 for data visualization. Because we'll be working here with raster files and nightlight data is organized into format, we will need a package that will uh, allow us to load and then modify uh, these raster uh, files. And that one is Terra package, which I usually use. Uh, next thing is we do also want to crop the area using the national boundaries of Ukraine. So for that purpose, we will be uh, using the asset package to uh, actually load uh, and modify uh, national boundaries in the ship file format. And then to actually load the national boundaries of Ukraine, we can use uh, GISCO R for the purpose, which is simply a client allowing us to uh, communicate with GISCO and get any shape out for any country that we need. And then finally, because we want this to uh, turn into uh, an HTML, uh, page, uh, we definitely need a shiny for that. The next step is to actually check if these packages are installed. So for that purpose, we're just going to uh, create here a new object called installed libraries. Uh, and then within this installed libraries, we're going to simply uh, use this uh, lips array and then go and uh, find within the row names of installed packages if they are already uh, installed. So, uh, if they're not installed, however, then we need to install them. So, the next step is to say here and write if else statement. So, if any of these installed uh, libraries equals false, in other words, if they're not there, then we open this curly brackets and then we say to R to install packages. So, in other words, install dot packages, but not all install packages. Install only those that are not among the installed libraries. So uh, this is how you write it. All right, and then the final step is simply to load everything uh, because here we are dealing with the list of libraries that we wanna load. We need to use uh, lapply function and then we're gonna apply it to the list of libraries. We're gonna apply the function called a library, which is a base function in R and which is used for loading uh, libraries in general into R. 
All right, so in this tutorial, we want to create a nightlight maps of Ukraine one year before the war and the first year of the war, so 2021 and 2022. And to do that, we do need to, first of all, fetch the national boundaries of Ukraine. For that purpose, we'll be using the GSCO R package, which we previously loaded. And it has a function, a very convenient one, called GSCO Get Countries, which allows you to get the shapefile format in the asset format actually for any country or region in the world so if you want to get a country you specify like this country equals to and then you need to provide in the form of a string the iso2 code of that country so for ukraine that's ua the second argument is optional and this one is how crisp you want to get this map so uh one is very crisp and then 50 let's say is uh not so crisp so we're gonna go for three and again you can notice here that this needs to be in a string format today's tutorial we'll be working with a nightlight satellite imagery from earth observation group or eog and their website is eogdata.minds.edu and then slash products slash vnl and over here, uh, you will be able to find different products that they offer. Most importantly, on the right hand side, there is something which is called annual VNL version 2. You click on this one. Basically, this one is the annual cloud free composites that span from 1992 to 2013. If you scroll even more down, you will see some of the examples from uh, this data set, but also specifications. So this one is in a gzip format. It offers you actually several file contents. For our purposes, we are interested in the average mask, which means uh, files that exclude all other lights uh, that are not night lights. And uh, what is also important, this is in a GeoTIFF format. And the coordinates reference system is the standard um, WGS84, so the 4326 uh, data. And the resolution is, as you can see, quite crisp, around 500 meters at the equator, so pretty good. Uh, but it's not tiled, so basically we are going to be downloading for the entire globe. And to download, we go to the latest version, which is this one. So go to download a v2.2, you click on this one which is going to lead you to the folder. Now, you might be surprised why there is only for 2022. And that is because this is a new method they implemented. It's 2022 is the only year available at the moment. So you can click on this folder. Um, and then here you uh, have a bunch of files. But as we said before, what you are after is the second row, which has average mask uh, TIFF file. And this one is only 295. Megabytes. The one, the first one, which includes all the lights, is huge, 9.1 GBs. But luckily, we only need the second one. So please copy the link to the second one. Uh, and then we want to fetch also for 2021. So we go to this pathway here. We click on Annual, and then we choose V21, which is the third from the top to the bottom. We click on that folder, and once we actually open that one you will see uh, different years. So we're going to go for 2021 folder here. We again click and then again, we need the average mask file. So again, please do copy the second file. Um, and then we can go into R, paste those codes and actually download these zip raster files directly from R. Our next step is to download the data. So here I simply pasted those two links that we previously copied from the website. So they are here. Uh, the next thing is we're going to wrap them up and put into a list of objects, which we're going to call here URLs. So we're going to put them like this and they also need to be declared as strings. So you, we need to wrap them uh, around these quotation marks. And of course, because there are uh, two parts of the list, we need to put comma after the first one. And of course, wrap them up into brackets like this. So once we define here the URL, we can simply def uh, download them using the for loop. So uh, for URLs in this, or for URL in the URLs list, we open the curly brackets here. And then within this curly brackets, we simply use the base R function, which is called download.file. Uh, here we need to provide several things. The first one is the URL that we want to download. The second one is the destination uh, file. So here we're just going to grab 
that last actual file name. And to do that, we just use here base name of the URL. And then finally, uh, we do want to download this in a binary mode. All right, so once we run this, this is going to start downloading uh, those two uh, raster files to our uh, working directory. All right, and once we downloaded those files, we do want to enlist them so that we can unload them into R. For that purpose, we're going to create raster files object and then use from base R function called list files. So this will going to enlist all those uh, files that are in your working directory based on a certain pattern. So the first thing is you here need to set that you want to of course, pathway set to the main working directory. And second one, you want some kind of a recognizable pattern, especially if you have other files there. So for that purpose, you can just use NPP, which is definitely gonna show up in the names. And here we also want to have full names, so including the pathway to them. If you did everything properly, you should be able to see only those two raster files on the list, just like I have them here. So the first one is 2021 and the second one is a 2022 nightlight values. Now that we have this, we can go ahead and simply load the data. Now you might be wondering how are we going to do that since they are actually uh, compressed. Well, we're actually going to load them immediately into R and then uh, we'll add one line of the code or at least actually one string, which will help us load them as TIFF files without the need to decompress them. So. Uh, we're going to create something called Globe Lights. So this is going to be our uh, list of those two raster files. And because we're creating a list, again, we need to use this lapply function in R. And then what are we going to apply? So the first one is we need to provide the raster files. But because they are compressed currently, we just need to add one string, which is going to allow us to load them as TIFFs. So for that purpose, we'll need to use paste here. And then we are working here with raster files. But uh, as I mentioned before, uh, for them to be loaded as the files, we just need to add this string. So uh, double slash and then VS I G zip. All right. Uh, and then finally here, uh, we are applying to this list a Terra Rust function, which is going to allow us to load uh, to load them. If you follow all the steps so far, you should be able to see these two members of the list. Both members are SPAT raster files, so which is a Terra format for a raster file. They have very large dimensions because here we are talking about the global nightlight data. They span, of course, the whole globe. And here you can see, based on their names, that the first one is, of course, for 2021, and the second one is for 2022, which is going to come in handy later on when we actually start mapping uh, these nightlight data. So once we have this, of course, we want only nightlight data for Ukraine. So the next step is to crop this global extent using the Ukraine extent and get only, of course, the rasters for Ukraine. The challenge here is, of course, we are working with the list, so we also need to uh, be mindful of that. So we're going to create a new list, which is going to be called country lights list. And here, so we're going to still be working with list. And for that purpose, we'll be, uh, we'll need this L apply once more. So what are we going to apply here? Well, we're going to apply to that list that we already created, which is called global lights. We're going to create a function here, uh, which is going to apply uh, the crop function from Terra. So like this. Now, within this one, uh, we first of all need to specify the actual crop function. And within this crop function, uh, there are several things we want to do. So we want to apply to this X object of the function. And then the next one is the country SFL. So we want to use that uh, Ukraine national boundaries to crop these raster files. But because Terra works with specific formats of uh, these shape files, which are vector files, we do need to convert this one into a Terra friendly format using Terra Vect and then just wrapping this around this country as an object. All right. And then after this, we simply need to do two more things. Uh, first one is we want to take everything that is inside of the Ukraine national boundary. So that's why we write here snap equals in. So snap everything that is inside the boundaries, leave out everything 
that is not. Uh, and the last one is mask equals true, which means that we are going to declare NA values everything that is outside of the Ukrainian national boundaries. So essentially, you should see again two roster files, two members of the list. But now you can see that the dimensions are much uh, smaller. That's because we cropped only the Ukraine extents. And you will also see that the extent itself, so the coordinates, are also different because they now correspond to the bounding box of Ukraine. All right, so now that we have this, the next one is to actually uh, work a bit with projection. So projection that I like to use for European countries is the Lambert conic projection. Uh, but if you're working with non-European countries, I would just suggest that this is optional. You should actually skip this part. It's not really important for you. So in this step, we will simply reproject both of those elements of the list into this Lambert conic projection from uh, the current one, which is WGS84 projection. And for that purpose, we'll be creating another object here, which is going to be called country lights reproach just to kind of indicate that we are doing that again we are working with lists so we need to use this l apply uh, function and then here we are of course going to apply this to the country lights list that we previously created and we're gonna again write function and within curly brackets we're gonna use terra projects uh, function now terra project accepts two elements one is uh, of course x and the other one is y which is the target projection which we previously uh, defined here so it's crs lambert so what this will do essentially when you run this simply going to reproject again if you're working here with a non-european country please do not transform here you can go to the next step and the next step is to get rid of zeros and sub zeros which actually simply show the absence of any light. So uh, we'll do that in the following way. First of all, we're gonna create uh, a new object which is gonna be called country lights final. So this is gonna be the final list of objects. After that, we're gonna do some other transformations. And uh, once more, we're gonna use L apply here simply because we are applying a function to the list. And the list to which we wanna apply is the previously created object which is called country lights reproj. In case you didn't reproject in the previous step, you should be using country lights lights list. So that's very important to know. So here we again define a function, and in this uh, case we want to replace values. So again, Terra has a very convenient function called if l, which actually comes from if else. So how does it work? Well, first of all, you need to write a condition. And here, because I want to exclude zeros and sub-zeros, I'm saying, so for every x that is that is equal to zero or is less than zero, basically turn into NA, else just return the normal value that it is. In order to uh, create maps with ggplot2, you need to first of all transform uh, rasters into a data frame. And this is exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to create an object, which is going to be a list once more. And it's going to be called country lights DF. And DF denoting that it's data frame. Once again, we're uh, using here L apply. And we are applying to the previously created object, which is country lights final. We are applying here once again a function. And the function is called s.data.frame. So this is going to coerce the raster file into data frame, but in the following way. So we're going to apply, of course, to each member of the list here. A second is going to be coerced in the way that each of the pixels that you have in raster, we're going to take the centroid of the pixel. So the data frame is going to get X and Y coordinates. And the third one is going to be the value, which is going to be the average value of your pixel. So in order to get that here, you need to uh, define x and y equals true. And finally, you can also remove any of the missing values here by also declaring here that na.rm equals true, right? And you can, of course, now run this. 
And once this is done, because we're still working with the list, we want to inspect the list here just to see, okay, how this structure looks like. So we can uh, use this uh, function from base R, str, and then uh, pass this one and then run it. And what you can see here, so we have two members of the list. They are data frames, just as we want it. And they have three fields, each of them. So one is X and uh, the other one is Y. So these are the coordinates. And the third one is value. But you can see here that the value column is very long. This is because it inherits the layer name of each of these layers. So the first one is obviously 2021. The other one is 2022. So what we want here is to bring some order into this chaos and to actually rename the third column. So to do that, first of all, we need to define here column names. So these are going to be all the columns named for each of the data frames. So they're going to be the same. So the first one is X. The second one is Y. These are the values that stay. But the third one, I want to rename value. And now because we are working with a list of data frames, we need to apply this to a list. And this is how you do it. So we're not going to create a new object. We're just going to work on this country lights EF. And we are going to, of course, once again, use L apply because we are applying a function to the list of data frames. So we are just going to apply to this country lights df function called set names, which allows us to set the column names of each of the data frames member of the list. And finally, we're going to say apply this, of course, to the column name. So I'm just going to run this now and I want to show you once more how now the structure looks like once we run this. So for that reason, I'm just going to expand now this terminal window and then I'm going to rerun this uh, structure. So this is what we got. So once more, we have X and Y, but you can see now we have the value as the third column. Before we jump straight into mapping, it's a good thing to actually first define the colors that we'll be using. So these are the colors that uh, we will use in the hex code. We will start off with a bit of a dark blue and then we will transition to uh, yellow and finally we'll end up with white. Now, it would be really good to actually add a bit more flavor to this map and increase the number of colors in the palette. So, uh, for that reason, we're going to be using color ramp palette, uh, which is going to help us do that. So, uh, this object calls that we uh, define, we're just going to expand. And we were also going to do one other thing, which is we're going to add more of this lighter spectrum in the overall palette. And you can do that using this bias option. And I'm going to set bias to eight. So the higher the bias, the more uh, actually of those palettes are going to be using are going to assume uh, colors towards the higher end. In our case, that's going to be yellow and white. So it's going to be more of that. Uh, and finally, we can also define here the number of colors we want to uh, have. And I put here quite a large number, but the more actually the, the higher number you put here, uh, the more detail you will have. In this tutorial, I'll be creating two nightlight maps of Ukraine, one for 2021 and the other one for 2022. But at the moment in our list, we don't really uh, delineate between those two years. So uh, we should now go ahead and actually name uh, those data frames so that we know exactly uh, their years. So we're going to start off by defining years in a list uh, in the exact order as they appear in uh, our list of data frames. So 2021 followed by 2022. And then in order to name the, uh, the list, we can use names here and then just simply pass this object called country lights df uh, and then just simply assign years to it. So once you actually uh, run this, uh, you should be able to see actually the, the new, um, you know, the new structure. So let me quickly just uh, do that. So again, we're going to uh, see the structure of this one. And once we do that, you will be able to see right now that. So we have 2021 for the first data frame and the, the other name is 2022. We're finally ready to map. And now we will write a ggplot2 code, which is going to help us create both maps. So we're going to create an object called map. And because here we're working with a list of data frames, we once more need to use L apply. Now, uh, here we do want to apply this function to each of the names of the data frame. So we can pass here that our main object is names of these country lights df. 
Uh, and then we can simply write the function for uh, executing this uh, ggplot2 code. So the first thing that we need to define here, function can be a function of df, where df is actually each of those data frames, right? So here we start off by, first of all, executing ggplot code. And the first thing that we need to do here, and we need to define the data. Of course, we are here working uh, once more with this list, but we here want to specify that we want to create a plot for each member of the list, which is a data frame. So that's why we put here into the brackets just after the name of this list. Once we are done with that, we can add more stuff to our plot. And one of them is, for example, the Ukrainian national boundary so that we can clearly delineate that space around uh, around the nightlight map itself. For that purpose, we need to use GMSF because this is used to plot SF object and our Ukrainian national map is an SF object. So the data will be, if you still remember, country underscore SF. So this is uh, that simple features uh, file that contains uh, Ukrainian national boundaries. We do want it to be transparent. So the fill here is gonna be set uh, to uh, missing but we also want to show the boundaries themselves. So for that, we can choose the color here and we can actually go ahead and choose among the existing colors. And I suggest we go for that blue uh, from our palette, which is uh, the first element of that calls uh, object. Uh, but you can here put anything else you want. So you can uh, choose white or yellow, uh, whatever uh, you, you think it's, it's good. And finally, we can choose the, the the width or like the, the thickness of this line and I'm going to go for something very small something like 0.05 so it doesn't stand out that much um, in the next step we will add our main layer uh, which is going to be uh, the actual raster file or raster files in this case so uh, because we are here dealing uh, with filling those uh, pixels we need to choose here AES uh, and then in the aesthetics here, the things that are going to change are, of course, X and Y coordinates. And of course, the way you fill uh, the interior of, of the rasters, which is going to be managed by a value. All right, so once we are done with that, we can go ahead and work now on the customization. And the first one is we can customize the colors uh, here that we want to use. So for that, we can use scale, fill, gradient, uh, okay, so uh, in this tutorial, I'm not going to, you know, show the legends because the numbers, they don't mean uh, that much and not so intuitive. So here I'm just going to, first of all, leave uh, the title of the legend empty. This is how you do it. Uh, and second, I'm also going to say that we're going to use for colors that uh, pal object that we previously created. Now, uh, the next thing is to define the coordinate reference system that you're going to use. and if you are going ahead and making this map for non-European countries and you didn't really transform it into a different projection, you can simply omit this part. You don't need to now write it as I'm doing. I'm writing it simply because we are using here the Lambert conical projection and I wanna make sure that ggplot2 knows that. All right, and the final step is to um, also customize your theme. This is how your plot is going to look like. So the first theme I want to apply is this theme void because this one is going to get rid of any excess things around your plot. But because I want to customize even further, that's why I open this theme argument. And here, as I said before, because I don't want legend to show, I use here the argument legend position and I state that it should not appear. Um, I would like to plot the title uh, of the map and each title should be, uh, of course, uh, the, the year so that we know when we actually transition when we swipe, what are the year, what is the year that we are looking at. So here uh, I'm going to go ahead and specify plot title. If you're working with, if you want to specify customized things like titles, subtitles, captions here in ggplot2, you need to specify that it's a text. So here you need to say, first of all, it's element text, and then within these brackets, you can do things. So one thing that I wanna do is I wanna choose a very big size here, 80 pixels for the size of the title so that it's visible. Uh, ultimately, I want the size of the plot to be 10 times bigger, so 800 by 800 pixels. Uh, then I do want it to be visible. Uh, the background will be dark blue. So for that purpose here, uh, I'm gonna go and choose white, the color of, of the plot's title. Uh, and I want it to be in the middle of the plot, so that's why I'm putting here 
that horizontal justification is 0.5. And finally, I don't want it to move uh, up or down, so I'm gonna set vertical justification to zero. Um, there are other things that you can also uh, specify here, and one of them that I really wanna do is, I wanna specify here the plot's margins. So I actually want to specify them so that they only take what is necessary there. So I don't want to expand or shrink the plot margins. For that purpose, here I'm stating within the list of all the sides, there are four sides, that the top side will be zero, meaning it's not going to be expanded or shrank. Uh, then uh, the next one is the right, so that one is also going to be zero. Uh, then the left hand side also zero, and finally the bottom hand side zero. If you're using this one, also remember to add here the uh, units they're going to use, so in this case, lights. All right, so this is basically uh, everything I want to do around the theme. And the last one is, you remember, for uh, each of these maps, I want to plot a title, which is going to show what is the year of that map. And it's very straightforward since we put this, uh, we wrapped it into L apply argument. So what we need to do here is we use labs, and then we specify that title equals to DF where DF is the name of each of the data frames. Once we created the maps, we need to save them locally on our drive. And for that purpose, we can use for loop. So we can say here, for, uh, and then in the brackets, I, where I is gonna be the each uh, plot, in one to two, meaning from the first to the second elements. And then you open this curly brackets, and here you actually need to specify a variable file name. When I say the variable, it means that, uh, of course, uh, it's going to, you know, use I here. But I do want to specify a bit further and say that uh, each should have, for example, something like, should start with Ukraine map and then underscore. And then it can have I here. And very importantly, you also need to specify here in the name the file extension. So I'm going to use .png for that purpose. So each file is going to have this. The only um, difference is going to be this I. So for 2021, it's going to have uh, one. And for 2022, it's going to have two. That's all. So once we actually defined uh, the, the file name, the next step is to save this. And there is uh, one option in uh, base R, which is called PNG, which specifically is used to saving PNG files. All right. So here we can pass to this PNG. Uh, file name, which we just defined, uh, and then we can specify a width and the height. And as I said before, as we were writing the ggplot2 uh, code, I want uh, the width and height to be 800 by 800 pixels. So I'm going to also specify here that I'm talking about pixels. So units are equal to px. Uh, and then finally, there is also the question of the background. As I said before, I would like it to be in a dark blue and a blue that is darker than the one that we have. So we can go ahead and choose this one here. Uh, and then once we actually uh, do this, we need to actually print those maps. So we simply call this print map. And then once more, we use this double brackets with the I uh, here, which means that it's going to print each of those maps that are part of a list of maps, right? And then finally, we simply uh, uh, close off this device and uh, this should then create uh, those maps on the local drive. If you followed all the steps so far and there was no error in your way, then you should be able to see these two maps that we just produced. Now, for the purpose of uh, working with Shiny, we do need to put these images into a folder where our Shiny is located. So you might be wondering, how do I know where my Shiny is located without going outside of R? Well, it's uh, actually quite easy. First of all, there is um, an argument in R, which is called leap paths. And if you do with open brackets like this, and then you run, it's actually gonna tell you where your library is. So this is a pathway to my library. If you run this, you will get something else. But in essence, this is where not just Shiny, but all your packages are located. So we now need to actually move this. And there is a very convenient uh, command in R, which is called file copy, where we need to provide the current working directory. So this is where we actually save the maps. Uh, we need to provide the directory where we want to put the maps. Uh, and then simply we just uh, you know run this command and it's gonna move those copy those uh, images those two maps into that new for folder. So we first of all need to define here 
the current current uh, deer or director. So in our case, that's simply the one that we are have been working since the start of this tutorial. So we just use get working directory. The second one is where we want to move to, and I'm going to call it here shiny deer. So here, we of course need to use this lib pulse. So we want to, uh, to end up there, but not anywhere. We actually want this to end up in a shiny uh, directory. So this is where the package is. And then there is a subfolder within shiny called www. And this is where we want you know, to, put, um, to put those, to place those two images. So in order to create this pathway, we simply uh, wrap up uh, these two elements into paste uh, now. All right, and once we do that, we also need to tell, okay, what are the images that we want to put there? So we don't want to create here images underscore list, and we uh, are going to use here list files because list files shows us the list of files. So what is the pathway? Well, it's really nice here because we define already current deer. So this is where the images are. And pattern, well, for pattern, we can use something uh, where, that we used before to save those maps. And this is uh, this Ukraine map. So uh, unless you save something else under this name, but if you didn't, it's going to recognize those maps, no problem. You can also, for example, put here uh, .png, but in case you're working in the directory where you already have some uh, images in the PNG format, then uh, that's not good because it's gonna also uh, suggest you those maps. Anyways, now we have the current directory, we have the Shiny directory, and we have the list of images that we wanna put there so finally we can use file.copy and here specifies several things first is the from argument so here we specify where from so of course from the current current directory this is where we want to move from now within the current directory the thing is you want to um, point to a specific path you want to point to the path where the images are so it's not just like a current directory here you are pointing to the images list you don't want to take anything else uh, from there all right so once you do that uh you can specify then two so this is where it's going to go to and it's going to go to the shiny directory right that we also defined uh, there's several other things that you can do uh if you already moved stuff there uh, and you want to overwrite it you can simply state here overwrite equals true so that's going to save you some problems here you can also say that you don't want this operation to be recursive uh, and finally uh, you want to enable the copy mode so that equals true we're here at codeopen.io uh, slash dudley story slash pen slash djqnkp for a specific reason, not simply because I want to show you what we're going to create. Uh, you can see this swipe I have here. So this is what we're going to create. But more importantly, you will notice here there are three uh, chunks with uh, HTML, CSS and JavaScript or JS code. The reason why we are here is actually this is going to help us create our own swipe effect in R. So for that reason, what we need to do next is we need to copy each of these chunks and paste them into R. Why? Because uh, they're going to help us with different things. So the JS one is going to help us actually uh, create uh, this feature, which is a slider. CSS is going to help us design the outlook of, um, of, of the screen itself. And finally, the HTML is going to put everything into a, a container where we can actually present this in, in a HTML code so we can open it, let's say, in browser. So the next thing is to then use all these, copy all these links and paste them into your R editor where next we're going to write the code uh, and then start our Shiny app, which is going to help us create the swipe effect for the nightlife maps of Ukraine. We're back in R and I just want to show you that I pasted here all that code and I also indicated uh, what is the chunk that belongs to. So the first one is the CSS code then it goes all the way down to the JS code and finally it ends with HTML code. The next thing is to actually uh, put this into an R readable format. And that means actually two things. First of all, it means making this uh, the actual um, uh, string. So you need to wrap it around the, you know, the quotes or quotation marks, just like I did. The second one is you need to create here a CSS object and you need to use here uh, function HTML from R, 
and just wrap this up into this into these brackets just like I did. So then we can just go through this CSS code to kind of uh, change it a bit and fit for our own purposes. So the first thing here is that it's going to create this container where we will then place uh, our maps. So uh, this first thing that you see width and height, this is the actual viewport uh, height. So if you remember, we, uh, we have a maps of resolution 800 by 800 pips, pixels. So for the viewport to be uh, functional, we need a 10 times, approximately 10 times uh, lower value. So we're gonna here go for uh, 80 by 80 viewports. And then here, max width and max height, this actually refers to the actual size of our maps. So here we just need to change 600 with, uh, with 800, both for the width and the height. The next thing is uh, adding the figure to this container. So here you have something called background image and it says here URL and it takes uh, some image from uh, the Amazon server. So you want to delete this inside of these uh, brackets. And then here, what you want to do puts into quotation marks once more the name of your map. So you should start here with the first map, uh, which is the map of uh, Nightlight in Ukraine in 2021. So uh, this is the name that we used in this tour. So Ukraine underscore map underscore one dot PNG. So you can actually uh, copy this because we will use it uh, uh, down below. So this one is going to have the original width and height, so it's going to be 100. There are some other things here uh, that uh, you might want to kind of uh, experiment a bit if you if you need, but for our purposes, this is going to be sufficient. Then it comes to the next one. So the next one is, again, you want to change here, but here you want to put that it's a second map. So this is the space for that second map. And uh, uh, this map is going to be not completely visible at the beginning, uh, it's going to be mostly the first map, but then the slider will help us reveal, you know, uh, the second map. So this is more or less it. There are other things here that you can also uh, change, which is like a background color here by default. You know, the background is uh, simply, if there is any background, then it's going to be white. Uh, but in our case, because we are limiting to 800 pixels, our background is going to be uh, dark blue. Uh, again, there are more things here where you can, uh, you know, again, specify the width and height of different parts of this uh, uh, this container. But we can now move to the next part, which is the JS code. Our next move is to organize this JavaScript code and make it native to R is our first step. So we're just going to create here a JS object and we're going to call HTML and put the brackets around this code and then use here single quotation marks uh, to mark this. Now, there are two things that we want to do here. The first one is to change the order of appearance here. So you see this function and then move the visor uh, ending up with these curly brackets. So this you should cut and you should put here at the front. All right, so now the second part uh, is the part where we define this uh, divisor. So basically the, the swipe divisor and also the slider itself. That one we actually need to um, also adjust to shiny. So there is one line of the code that you need to uh, add and this is the line of the code. So dollar sign and then open the brackets here, write document, then dots on and then you open these brackets. And here you wanna specifically specify that we are dealing here with shiny and it's shiny connected. So shiny uh, colon and then connect it here. And then you don't close the bracket just yet, but you call a function here. And the function is the event, right? So the function is event. And here you open this curly brackets. So then you go to the end of this uh, and then you do actually uh, several more things. So first of all, you close the curly brackets, you close the normal brackets, and then you put this semicolon. So this actually finalizes then your JS code. Third and the final step is the HTML codes where we will actually put to use uh, Shiny itself. So we will use this HTML code to actually define our user interface. So we're gonna create an object called UI, and then we're gonna use for the first time Shiny, and specifically its function called fluid page, which is going to actually allow us to change the page, uh, you know, outlook based on the viewport that we define. So that's why it's called fluid page. And then over here, we open the brackets uh, and there are two things that we want to define. 
those actually relate to the CSS and those and the JS object that we created. So we need to create here uh, uh, heads uh, or tags, two tags, uh, where we take the, the head values, uh, tags of style that belongs to that object CSS. In other words, the first one is going to be the style and the second one is going to be that JS script. So again, we use here tags, heads, and then again, tags, but this time it's not a style, uh, it's actually script. Scripts, and then here we simply call the JS object. So these are the two elements. And then the final one is this HTML part. So here, again, we need to uh, use the HTML function. Uh, open this brackets, and then everything you see here, you want to uh, cut and actually paste it within these uh, brackets. So once you actually do that, next thing what you need to do is uh, define here as uh, in single quotation marks, you define simply that it belongs uh, to this. So uh, this is going to be the user interface. So now it has all the three components, it has the style defined by CSS, it has a script which is JS, and finally it has the outlook of the container where we're going to put those maps which is defined here by this HTML code. So once you do that, the next thing is to uh, write a function for the server so that we can initiate the uh, Shiny app. So the server here is going to be equal to the function and then our functions. Uh, so this is a generic one that you always use to uh, run uh, Shiny apps, inputs, and then outputs, and then finally the session. And then you just close uh, these brackets. And the last, last step is to again call Shiny and Shiny app. So this is basically just going to launch the app that we just created, where we have two components. The first one is the UI that we defined, and the second one is the server. If you run the code without any error, you should be able to see two output lines. And then you can simply click Control on Windows and then click on here and follow this link, which will open the output in your default browser. And the browser will show you this. So this is the first map, uh, 2021. And down below in this lower left corner, you will see this slider. So you can click on the slider and you can start moving it, which is going to reveal the night lights in 2022. And I feel like you will be shocked the way I was shocked seeing this how much the nightlight has actually decreased in Ukraine in the first year of the war compared uh, with the year just before the war. And that's all for today, folks. In today's tutorial, you learned how to create interactive nighttime light maps with Shiny in R. In specific, we created a before and after nighttime light map of Ukraine. And if you would like to replicate this analysis, I prepared a GitHub repo in the description below. So feel free and check it out, clone it, reuse it, modify it as you see fit. If you have any comments, questions, or just general feedback, you can reach out to me here on YouTube, but also on X and Instagram. If you're new to R and you seek to expand your data visualization and geospatial knowledge with R, I prepared a few cool tutorials for you. See you next time.